And Darnell Smith warns what up? the best and brightest. What it up? What it up? We won the playoff game on Friday. Going to Semi State this Friday. Oh. Undefeated season. Oh. One more big game, man. We Nationally good. ranked. All right, Darnell, what's <laughs> popping out there on them Twitter streets? Regular. All right, man. We're going to start with an ugly game over the weekend. The Raiders lost to the Chargers 20 to 6. Not a big surprise there. They've been terrible all year. But what is surprising is what this reporter overheard uh, after the game. Check this out. One, one Raiders veteran to another on his way out of the locker room. Past three reporters, quote, I got to get the bleep out of here. <laughs> all right, guys. We've all played for bad teams here. So do you guys blame this angry Raiders player? Well, you guys got more experience playing for bad teams. <laughs> Lost eight and stuff like that. Columbia, you man, you can't talk. <laughs> you yeah. can't talk. <laughs> you know what? Part of this I don't like. He overheard mm. as the guy's walking out of the locker room. The play, and again, this probably isn't the case because I'm sure the repel the reporter heard it and knew the context, but he could I just gotta get out of this locker room right, right. now. I just right. gotta get out of here. I need to get away from this for a moment. Does he mean I need to get away from the Raiders completely? And if so, I don't even know if that's that much of an original thought. That happens to players throughout the season from time to time. A absolutely. It's one of the symptoms of losing. You just want to get out. You just want to get away from it. Nobody's inviting that in. Uh, you never know what it could be. It could be Mark Davis is coming down. He's like, man, I got to get out of here because I don't even want to deal with whatever comes from that. And that's still not as bad as this sounds like. Context matters. It could be one of your teammates. And every time I've been on a losing team, we always had a barker. A dude who come in there, hey, man, y'all know what? Everybody needs to step it up. And you're like, man, I can do it. I didn't want to deal with this. Like, we already got our butts whipped. I don't need this emotional beating coming from you. And it's all rah-rah, and it's not going to help us score more points. So I don't know that context, so I won't go in on this. I'm going to give this some Twitter. Right? Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, give yeah. This some Twitter. Put some names just, on it. Just, just a little it. bit, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Darnell, what's next? All right, moving on to another bad game. Marcel, you're going to love this one. Mm. <laughs> the Jets got crushed by Mac Barkley. In the bill yesterday. By who? By where? Matt Barkley, yeah, Bills. Mafia. <laughs> 41 to 10. Uh, Jets said that Jamal Adams said his team didn't quit, but Twitter thought otherwise, where Jets quit was trending for most of the day, and a lot of people started questioning their head coach, Todd Bowles. All right, y'all, don't forget that Sam Darnold didn't play here, but do y'all agree with Twitter that the team has quit on Bowles? Yeah, a little caveat. Oh, Sam Darnold didn't play there. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, you gotta we remember take, that. We take full advantage of all that. First of all, don't mess with no Bills Mafia. That's how we roll. Uh -huh. um, they did not quit. We made it look like they quit. That's how good we are right now. Bills Mafia, this is crazy. Got to give a shout-out to my big boy, Damian Woody. We had a little back and forth on this. Bills, Jets, laughing at it. Uh, the Bills in the last month, calendar month, have they didn't have a lead in one of those ball games. But then they play the Jets, and they're up 31-3 to at half. I don't know what that is. Um, let's just say every game, every given Sunday, any given Sunday, things can change. But I have not seen that much of a complexion change in a long time. It looks like these guys are tapped out. Do NFL players ever quit? Can you you see that? Uh, no, we don't quit. We're, one, we're incentivized by the non-guaranteed nature of the sport uh, because of injury. The next play could be your last forever. Uh, because of contract status and just status in the league. You're always auditioning in the NFL. That camera's always on for the team you're playing for and the other teams you may play for. So I've never seen quitting as a collective. What's next, Darnell? All right, y'all. There was actually some good football play yesterday, too. Mm -hmm. The Redskins beat the Bucks and have continued their surprising dominance atop their division. Our buddy Clay Travis is just as shocked as the rest of us tweeting. Wild and un unbelievable stat. Washington is in sole possession of first place in the NFC East in Week 10 for the first time since mm. 1991. Wow. But that's not the only surprise in the NFC. The Bears beat up on the Lions yesterday to stay in first place in the NFC North, leading one of the reporters to tweet, it's possible, and I know this might be controversial, that the Chicago Bears are good at football. <laughs> Nobody thought either of these teams would do much this year. So, guys, which bandwagon are you ready to jump on? Redskins or Bears? Wow, this is a little bit of a tough question for me. I'm friends with Alex Smith. The Redskins are having success. Do your real. job up but here, man. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday I was like, Mr. Trubisky, maybe he's good. <laughs> what do you think that is good? Oh, when he threw six touchdowns in one game, you didn't I, think he may be good? Fluke. I thought it was a fluke. <laughs> and so, they got Khalil Mack. They good. got a defense. And maybe Mr. Trubisky is good. Mm, I'm not jumping on either one of these bandwagons being real. I mean, 
bring the hydrogen peroxide if I am, because I'm falling off, because <laughs> these teams are not long for success. Um, I like the Bears more than I like the Redskins, which is the question. I would go with the Bears. Uh, at the quarterback position, they take greater risk, and right now they're having tremendous success with a young quarterback. And it, Tariq Cohen, I mean, they got they – got, players out there that can get the ball in the end zone. I like the Bears, man. They're, they're sneaky good this year. In the same division with the Vikings and the Packers, though, yeah. where the Redskins are in an easier uh -huh. division, in my opinion. Good point. Khalil Mack is out there creating havoc. Uh, he came back yesterday, got another sack. I, I, the division argument is hard to, to counter, except I'm saying which one can make more impact in terms of making the playoffs and doing something. Redskins will get in NFC East, okay, that's great. I don't see much of that team. The Bears get in there, that's a tough out. You're going to know you've been in a fight. All right, Darnell, last but not least. Got you. Yeah, I was watching First Thing First this morning, and our guy Chris Carter had a very interesting take and some high praise on Baker Mayfield. Uh, take a listen. What Baker has done at this point in the season, still having this confidence, have to, they fired the offensive coordinator, they fired the head coach, they asked him, how'd you feel this morning? I felt like things was getting ready to get pretty good. That right there is a star in the making. It's kind of like Johnny Manziel, but he can actually play. Mm. All right, Whitlock, I know you said the Browns were cursed in the past. <laughs> you think you think Baker actually bucked the trend? Uh, listen, I like Chris's take, but I watched all of that game, and that was not my takeaway. The thing I was overwhelmed with was that I feel like Dan Quinn and the Atlanta Falcons are in over their heads. Uh -huh. There's a coaching problem in Atlanta for them to be this bad. They they had gone on a nice little streak, but not against really good teams. And to get the doors beat off of them by the Browns with Matt Ryan and Julio Jones and that offense made no sense. So I was more coming away thinking about the Falcons than how special uh, Baker or Mayfield looked. Great points. Um, didn't even consider that, uh, but... I'm respecting Baker Murfield. Uh, 13 straight completions, three touchdowns, uh, and then the moxie. Like, it's almost like Cleveland went through puberty, and it was a long <laughs> process. <laughs> Pimples ugly, nobody wanted to touch. And then it came out looking way better. They dusted them off pretty fast this year. Three wins now, got a win already under Greg Williams. They they have dusted this, this franchise off pretty fast, and it's because of the moxie of Baker Mayfield. Look, if they end up winning five, six games this year, Greg Williams may keep that job. Who knows? All right, thank you, Darnell. Coming up.